Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Reef Subaru in Tampa, Florida, and I have a new vehicle from Subaru. This is a 2022 Subaru Outback, but that's not what's new. This is the first ever Outback Wilderness Edition. But before we get into this supersized lifted wagon that now has more rugged off-road capability, let's talk about what's going on here. When you think Subaru, maybe you're like me and you think of the WRX, you think of the STI, maybe my Type RA or an S209. Well, guess what? Subaru has vehicles in their lineup like this Outback that's actually been available longer here in the United States. We didn't get our first WRX until 2002. The Outback has been around since 1995, if you could believe that. But you know what? The sweetheart of a lifted wagon gets a new trim. Now, when we go wilderness, they're talking about raising the vehicle up a little higher. It's got taller springs. That's gonna give you better ground clearance and it's gonna give you a more rugged exterior and more functionality. So what I wanna find out is, is we have this 2022 Wilderness Edition. Is it worth the price to go this route? Or are you better served going with a traditional rugged SUV or maybe even a mid-sized pickup truck that has that rugged capability? Let's dive in to our 2022 Outback Wilderness Edition and see if we can answer that question. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice this color. It's called Geyser Blue, new for 2022. And I'm telling you, if I was gonna get a Wilderness Edition, this is the color to get. Now, at the front of the business, you're gonna notice a little bit more flat black. And the reason why they did that was not only to, I think, make it look a little bit more aggressive and definitely rugged, but this is gonna take a better beating than if this was all just beautiful Geyser Blue paint job. So they actually raised the plastic cladding all the way to right underneath the headlight housing. And when we're talking about the headlight housing, you're still gonna get those same great LED daytime running lamps, the projector beam style headlight, and the way everything kinda just fits perfectly into that front fascia looks really, really clean, really aggressive at the same time. Now, one thing that I like with this Wilderness Edition right off the bat is they got rid of the newer style rectangle fog lamps. I've always been really a, a, a lover of traditional round fog lamps, and that's what we have. As we kind of slide a little bit, you're gonna have these Gatling gun style LED fog lamps. Nice round cut. I like the way they mounted it right in that lower portion of the front fascia. And if you see this gold accent, there's a lot of gold accent on the Wilderness Edition. Underneath this plastic cover are tow hooks. So if you've ever been off-roading, somebody's stuck, maybe you get stuck yourself, pop those off and you actually have a set of tow hooks that are gonna help you get that stuck vehicle out of the sand, out of the mud, out of the dirt. Now, as we continue across the front, this is where you notice that extra ground clearance. Like I said, we're sitting on taller springs. So they took the ground clearance from 8.7 inches almost to 10 inches of ground clearance. 9.5 inches of ground clearance from the road to the underside. I don't know if you hear that, you're gonna have metal skid plates. So just like many of the off-road trucks, like say a Tacoma TRD Pro, you get those skid plates to protect the inner bits on the belly side of the vehicle, you're gonna get that protection for those off-road trails, make it more rugged, give us that extra ground clearance. Like I was telling you, there's that other gold plastic cover. This pops off and you have a tow hook under this side, another Gatling gun fog lamp. I like the way everything is functional. You got that nice simulated skid plate design up front to the lower bumper area, and you're gonna get a unique grill, almost like a chain link in a way. Nice and large, fully functional all the way around. You got that, of course, iconic Subaru badge. And then you're gonna have a very important thing when you're going down trails and off-road is a forward-facing camera. Now, as we get up onto the hood, you get a racing stripe. Not really a racing stripe. They actually call this an anti-glare stripe. And it does the business. By adding this flat black area, it's gonna cut down on glare that's coming from the sun as it is right now here in Tampa, Florida and actually cut that glare out so it doesn't reflect in your eyes and blind you, sort of like my sweat is blinding me right now. Now, as we come around the bend of this lifted Outback even higher than before, what do we got? Wheel and tire setup. So you're gonna get these unique 17 inch wheels. I love the satin black finish, really gives it a great look with the geyser blue that we have. And you're gonna get these Yokohama Geolander off-road tires. So these are gonna give you a little bit more strength on the sidewall. This really isn't a rock crawler by any means, but it is meant to be able to go over some more severe terrain. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of the tire? You're looking at 225 on the width, a nice 55 series sidewall, 
And you know what? It looks good with the raised white letters. That's something that's kind of gone bye-bye is having the raised white letters. It's looking good on the Wilderness Edition. I'll have Lori kind of zoom in and show you the taller springs. You can see the shock absorber in there to give us that extra wheel movement and also how they redesigned the fender flare. So they actually made this more aggressive, like I said, to help protect the beautiful paint. This will take a better beating as you're going down that off-road. Now, coming down the trail, the side of the vehicle, you got your Subaru Wilderness badge. There's more of that gold accent with the mountains. You're gonna be going through those mountains one of these days in your Wilderness Edition. They went a satin black on the mirror caps with your turn singles. And I'm glad that they kept everything just flat black on the side of the vehicle. Now down below, you're still gonna get that great look to the lower sill area with the Outback badge in that nice bright gold finish. And that just helps, like I said, with taking the beating as you're going down the road. Up top, you are gonna get your roof rails. Now what's great about this is that these have been enforced. So underneath the gold plastic caps, you have some nice reinforced capability. At speed, you could carry up to 220 pounds on these rails, stationary around 700 pounds. So if you're doing the outlanding thing and you're going camping and you wanna put the tent up there, this will withstand up to 700 pounds stationary, 220 pounds as you're driving down the road. Now, as we continue down the side, same great profile of the Outback. I've always liked the Outback. I've liked the Outback better than the Forester just because of the overall look of it and because it is a lifted wagon. When you come to the back side, you can see how they did the rear fender flare. Nicely done into that lower bumper area. And just like up front, they took the plastic cladding all the way to the bottom of the taillight housing. They moved the reflector. This is unique to the Wilderness Edition. You're gonna have your LED lighting blacked out on the badges. The Subaru, of course, we got the symmetrical all-wheel drive. And over on the passenger side, Outback with the Subaru Wilderness badge. And then as we drop down, just like up front, we do have two more gold plastic covers. That's for the rear tow hook. So you have front mounted tow hooks, rear mounted tow hooks. They actually did a little bit different gearing on the Wilderness and kind of revamped the CVT transmission for this particular edition. But why don't we go ahead? We talked about the exterior. Let's pop the hood and see what's powering our Wilderness Edition Outback. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod. I'm not gonna zonk it on the Wilderness Edition, especially the way Subaru is smart. They move it all the way over to the passenger side. Here's another thing that I love about this Outback is that right there. You can see that top mounted intercooler because we have turbocharged power. So what are we looking at in this 2022 Outback Wilderness Edition? You're looking at the 2.4 liter flat floor four engine, turbocharged of course, 260 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a CVT and if I'm gonna zonk anything, that would have to be the zonk is the CVT transmission, but they say they recalibrated it for the Wilderness Edition, zero to 60 in about 6.2 seconds, top speed around 118 miles an hour. The Wilderness Edition weighs 3,950 pounds, MPGs around 22 in the city, 26 on the highway, and you're running, like I said, the gearing has been revised, 444 gear set on this Outback Wilderness Edition. I love popping the hood on a Subaru because it's so easy to see all those inner bits because you don't have a bunch of plastic all over the place. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what the Wilderness Edition brings to the off-road table. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 new color, geyser blue, new trim, the Wilderness Edition. Very interesting vehicle. It's like I was trying to rack my brain. What would you compare this to? There's really nothing out there. And I think that's one of the things that Subaru will always have a piece of my heart is because they make some unique vehicles for some very, very unique individuals with unique needs. So you're probably asking yourself, well, Joe, I'm actually digging this Outback Wilderness Edition. I have unique needs. How much is it? MSRP, the way that this one is optioned, is right at $39,996. Let's see what you get for the money. Let's go to the door panel. So what you're going to see, nice soft touch material up top. You'll notice a gold little tag on the door panel to let you know you went Wilderness Edition because there is some gold accents in here. They do a great job on the armrest. You look at that nice dark gray armrest with the gold contrast stitching, super soft, 
some very interesting trim. The good news is none of it's gloss black, so you don't have to cry to your mom that you got fingerprints all over the interior of your new Wilderness Edition. The only zonk is that door pocket. It's a little tight. Maybe a bottle of Surge and I would say two Pop-Tarts, and that's about it. But the good news is we got plenty of other storage areas. So going from the door panel to the dash, that nice soft gray material, there's more of that gold contrast stitching. Here's a Twinkie tray you could easily put, I would say 12 Twinkies, maybe a baker's dozen, but just be careful with that 13th Twinkie. I do like the trim that it's not gloss black. The stitch work is great. You even got a backup pocket for Slim Jims over here. So snap into a Slim Jim, keep that fully loaded. What they do have loaded here in the Outback Wilderness Edition is that over 11 inch vertical infotainment system. We have navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Of course, it's a touchscreen because that's how you're going to utilize the AC controls. You do have heated seats, no ventilated seats. At 40 grand, I would have liked to have seen ventilated seats, but you can control the temperature without touching the screen if you don't want to touch the screen. Navigation, really nice clear readout. And then up top, you have a separate system where you could go into your X mode settings. Normal, deep snow and mud, snow and dirt. All of this has been recalibrated for the Wilderness Edition. We could get the temperature, you can see your water temp, oil temp, all those goodies. And then like I showed you, we have a forward facing camera. The bad news is it's on the grainy side and I wish that it took more of this real estate up. If you have 11 inches of visual space, use your 11 inches. So it would be nice to, for it to be a little bit more clear and a little larger. And then I'll throw it in reverse. There's your backup camera with trajectory. Same story, it's on the grainy side. I'll put it in the park, working our way down. You can see the gold accents, that start stop button, easy to get to. The gloss black is kept to a minimum, so it's only right here where the shifter is, but they do bring some gold accent to the side here. You got your button to hit for the front camera. You got a little cubby here. This can be wireless charging. This one does not have it, but you can option it with wireless charging. We got an aux jack, two USBs. This is gonna control the CVT. You can see all the gold accent going on. Two cup holders and then you're gonna get your standard key fob. It's a great key fob from Subaru, nice weight, looks good. It's aged very, very well with the Subaru badge. Soft touch material with the stitching, open it up. What do we have? We have a nice little coin tray, all the coins that you collect from the 50 states. As you go on your wilderness adventure, you could save here and then lift that up. What do we got? Enough room, not only for a regular bag of Sour Patch Kids, but a family size bag and a 12 volt. So nice to have that connectivity. Put those back and then the seats. Subaru Wilderness specific, just like the badge on the exterior. Love this material. It's like this neoprene material, easy to keep clean, full electric assist for the passenger and the driver. And you're gonna have a standard size sunroof, which is a nice touch. I'm six feet tall, plenty of room in here, but why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Wilderness Edition Outback. All right, guys, business time on the business end behind the wheel. You get a nice sill plate here, all black plastic. It's gonna be easy to keep clean and it's gonna take a better beating as you're getting in and out, going on your little adventures. On this Wilderness Edition, we have an aluminum brake pedal and throttle. The only thing I'm gonna zonk is, usually Subaru does an aluminum dead pedal. I don't know what happened there. So maybe they ran out of aluminum that day, but it would be nice to have the aluminum dead pedal. What I do love are the seats. They're very comfortable and supportive. You got all your electric controls easy to get to. Like I said, plenty of headroom and then the steering wheel. Nice leather, good thickness. You have the gold contrast stitching all the way around. Just a little bit of glow, gold. It's nice not to have a bunch of gloss black. You do have paddles behind the wheel to go through the simulated gears that they have set up. Remember, this has a CVT transmission, manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and then the dash is simple and straightforward. You have an analog tack, analog speedometer, coolant gauge, and fuel gauge, and then you could toggle through different information in that small digital display. One last thing I do wanna point out is the EyeSight technology. Remember, this is that camera te technology to keep you safe, emergency braking, all that good stuff, lane keep assist. This is that newer version, which is smaller. So if you've been in an older Outback or Forester, this was much larger and it kind of got in the way of your vision, but now they really slimmed it up, trimmed it up to where it's not in your way and not really an eyesore. It's an eyesight system. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the back seat and see how your passengers are gonna love going on the adventures with you 
in this Outback. All right, guys, what I love about being in the back seat of an Outback is that there's plenty of room, even more room than what's up front. The seats are comfy, it's that nice soft material. The soft material goes all the way around the backs of the seats. You got large pockets, large enough to put a five pound bag of Twizzlers, so you're not gonna get hangry on your trip. I got two AC vents, heated seats, and you got USBs back here. So they got you covered connectivity wise and keeping you cool and warm, whatever is needed on your adventure. I have my own pocket, and you know what? I'm not putting Twizzlers back there. Since I'm Italian, I'm gonna go big old calzone with some extra sauce for dipping. That sounds good right about now. But you can see the amount of room, leg room, head room, armrest, they got you covered with two cup holders. But you know what? You could haul the people back there. Let's see what kind of gear, what kind of wilderness gear that we could carry in this Outback. Let's check it out. All right, guys, cargo time in the Outback Wilderness Edition. You hit that button, nice electric assist, and you'll see that you don't need to go big, huge SUV. In this wagon, we have a nice amount of width, nice amount of height. With the seats up, you're looking at 32 and a half cubic feet of space. I love the way they give you the little bit of a nook over there for that emergency box of Twinkies. And then as we pan to the backs of the seats, there's this nice, almost like a neoprene material on the backs of the seats so that you're gonna be able to have that protection when things are dirty, when things are muddy, when things are wet. We even have, yes, for our big old bag of backup Twizzlers, you got a nice little cargo net so your Twizzlers don't slide all over the place. Nobody likes their Twizzlers sliding all over the back of an Outback. 12 volt, don't stick your Twizzler in there, that might hurt. But the best part is, to get that extra space, we just pull down on the handles and that's where you're gonna have over 70 cubic feet of space. I love the way they have the handles nice and flat so you could go on those Outback excursions way into the wilderness, have everything you need, but you know what? If you're ready, I'm definitely ready because I have the keys to this wilderness edition. Let's go on throttle in a lifted wagon. All right, guys, we left Reeves Subaru. We're in the 2022 Outback Wilderness Edition on the asphalt jungle, getting onto the highway on throttle. Here we go. I tell you, ever since they put the 2.4 turbocharged engine in here, really nice acceleration. Of course, like I said, the weak link is gonna be that CVT transmission, but the great news is, is you're getting some snappy acceleration in the Wilderness Edition. Driving down the road, it really just absorbs the bumps, all the little imperfections so nicely. And what's really cool is you can clearly feel the height sitting behind the wheel of this Outback, the extra height that you have. Now, we're gonna have to wait until I get a press fleet vehicle directly from Subaru to really test the off-road capability. But since we are here at Reeves Subaru, it'd be nice to take it out for a spin and really kind of showcase what everyday life would be like. You know, it does have a little bit more off-road aggressive tire and it does create a little bit more off-road noise, but you know what? I think that they found a nice balance. Subaru really does a great job with finding a balance without going too far in any one extreme. Getting to the infotainment system, very nicely done. I don't mind the vertical setup um, that they have. I just wish, like I said, when you would use the forward-facing camera or the backup camera, that it would take a little bit more uh, uh, visual real estate up. But there we are right with the forward-facing camera. Other than that, everything is very intuitive and easy to use, which is nice. All right, guys, let's see how the on throttle is from a dead stop and see how it handles in a couple twisty little turns here. But on throttle, here we go. All wheel drive, getting the power to the ground effectively on the brakes. That's where you're gonna feel a little bit more that extra height is in the turns, but still, I tell you, you know, Subaru does a great job with their driving dynamics and allowing that feedback to the wheel. It, it, it just, like I said, the, the CVT transmission, it seems like it's here to stay. Maybe one day um, Subaru will, will, will swap it out for something else, but definitely having that ability to be sitting up higher and also having good drivability is very, very important. All right, guys, one more time. Let's see how it goes. On throttle, off and running, simulated gears, on the brakes. 
I'm telling you, not bad for a vehicle that's on off-road style tires. Not bad with how it drives on the paved surface. Really smooth. And like I said, I, I think that when it comes to the Outback overall, I've always enjoyed how they drive. And this Wilderness Edition, even though you're sitting up higher, still drives very, very well. Super smooth. I mean, it's... It's really a nice all-around vehicle that uh, if you're going to go off-road, you're really going to get some big advantages compared to the traditional Outback. You know, another thing that I really think is so smart about this Outback is that it doesn't, it's not a, a large vehicle per se, and it doesn't feel like a large vehicle when you're driving it. It's got plenty of room for your passengers, for your stuff, and like I said, it's been and Subaru's lineup since 1995, if you could believe that. But I'm hoping that this gave you a wonderful overall view of what the wilderness brings to the table. We're gonna get back to Reeves Subaru and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another great day here at Reeves Subaru. Definitely wanna thank LD and the rest of the team getting us not only one, but as you've seen in this review, two of their very first Outback Wilderness Editions. Very unique vehicle. The Outback was already unique. This Wilderness Edition takes it up another notch. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think this is worth the price of having that lifted wagon with the extra off-road capability? I wanna know what you have to say about it. But if you wanna keep seeing Wilderness Editions, lifted wagons, and everything else in between here on Rady's Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you and the channel, click the first link in the description, become a Radies Rise Patreon member. Click the second link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the greatest videographer ever. She'll film in the wilderness. She'll film in a parking lot. She'll even go to the highest mountain in the world. What mountain is that? Mount Everest. Definitely show Lori some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for being the muscle behind all the camera action. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.